I guess I should get straight into it, shouldn't I? Firstly, thank you very much for being here on this live chat. We're gonna try and do this once every week for those of you that missed it last time. Next to me, we've got a project that I'm currently working on, or it's gonna be a short project today. This is a drill press table that I'm making to upgrade my current drill press. So I've got it here, it's what I'm working on. It's gonna be a little bit of a late one tonight getting that sorted, I think. But if you're wondering what it is, that's what it's gonna be. That will be next week's project on Thursday. The way this live chat works is we're gonna be taking, I forgot to add them on. We're gonna be taking some of your questions from the workshop tour video that I posted two hours ago and I'm gonna be answering them. And then once we run out of uh, stuff there to answer, we're gonna be going through the live chat and answering your questions there as well. And just get, get a bit of interaction going, I think. Do we have any questions to start with? Well, first off, it, it's, it's a statement. It's, it's an error on your part. Okay. Uh, with the workshop tool. Alan Solomon says, the workshop during the introduction was 10 by five. And when you finished, it was 10 by four. He thought he'd make that comment just to prove you watched the whole video. Alan, let me tell you something. I measured this workshop once, and that was when I first moved in, but I only measured it front to back. So, what we're going to do, we're going to measure the width of the workshop. You're I think. Gonna... I'm going to do it now. Oh, we're going to make a definitive answer for this. Ah, oh, I was hoping it'd be five. It's 4.3. 4.3 meters wide, there you go, that answers your question. I was wrong on both accounts, I suppose. I bet that sounds horrible on the microphone. Yeah. Snappy, snappy, eh? Next question. So, Sylvain Gregor says, or asks, were all of your tools given or have you bought them? I bought them, apart from Bosch tools, actually. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, Disclaimer. right, disclaimer. All these tools, bear in mind that I worked at Axminster for five years. I absolutely rinsed that discount. I think it's fair enough to say that, yes, you get a staff discount working at yeah, no, a retail store. Yeah. Yeah, so right. I absolutely rinsed the discount. Yes, I got discount on some of my machines and stuff like that. Um, but there was a few things that I bought before that. I don't just buy stuff from Axminster. I purchase stuff from Classic Hand Tools, from Workshop Heaven, from Dieter Schmidt in Germany, Dictum Tools in Germany. There's all sorts of places. So yes, I did buy my tools. Apart from Bosch tools, they're sponsored to me, but I like Bosch tools. Yeah, there, there you go, go. good. Uh, he still has a follow-up question in there. And he wants to ask if you can help him out on how to start a YouTube channel <sighs> and if it counts as a job. Absolutely, of course it counts as a job. Yeah, but what year you, is it? How can you have fun and have a job? It, do, it doesn't <laughs> work to me. Okay. I'm miserable here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a bit of a speech. Like, this is something that requires a speech, but I'm not in the mindset to give a speech right now. In short, yes, it is entirely possible to make a living from a YouTube channel. I could do it right now, um, but I would be breaking even every month and I need to buy materials. I need to pay this guy to edit my videos. Oh yes, I'm very valuable. <laughs> yeah, so like, Yes, you can do it as a job. Obviously, the more following you get and the smarter you are with it, it's easier to get an income from it, but you shouldn't do it for the income. You should do it for the enjoyment, which is what Rob said about getting a job you enjoy. I know it sounds cheesy, like I don't do this for the money, I do it for the fun. You genuinely do it for the fun, like, yeah. Yeah. So, if you want a quick way to start a YouTube channel, I'd recommend you just start watching Gary V, V double E. He's got lots of advice um, on that and social media in general. I've got one of his books up here. Jab, 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 right hook. It's a good book. Next question. Next question. Well, uh, let's go for a statement, in fact, because uh, in the previous video, in the workshop tour, there was a guest yeah. in the workshop. Um, Matt Peterson particularly thinks that uh, we might need to call pest control. Not sure who deals with bugs that big, but hopefully you can get that thing removed soon. Yeah, I don't know where it is at the moment. 
sort of just creeping up there. It comes out <laughs> and whacks it. <laughs> what we should have done is prepared for that question and got someone up there to drop something on my head. Brilliant. <laughs> um, with that video, we're going to do a behind the scenes video on how we did that or how Rob did that because he edited it. Uh, there's a lot of things where I caught us chatting about how we could do it. So it should make quite an interesting watch, I think. Yeah. It's fair to say. It'd be interesting to chat about it as well. And uh, I, I can already tell that people have picked up on my, my sl slightly noticeable video editing. Yeah, <laughs> slightly. It is subtle what you do, but yeah. Yeah. By the way, do you guys like the quality of the stream now? It's a vast improvement on last week, isn't it? Vast improvement. The well done, Rob. only issue is people are saying that I should be mic'd up. But I should be. I should be on mic. Oh. This should be loud enough. Why is this not working? Should be coming through. <laughs> Um, okay. Please let me know if you can hear me. I'm gonna go really close, and if you can hear this, <laughs> Rob's then it's doing still a bit working. of ASMR right now. Okay. <laughs> You've got to wait 30 seconds. I've That's the awkward bit. <laughs> to see what people say. Can you make a display cabinet for all of your novelty pens? Says William Simpson. I've got three novelty pens. I think I've got no four novelty pens. I've got a walnut one. I've got the black palm one that I did for turning Tuesday. And I've got a Jesus pen and a unicorn pen. That is a quite a good idea. Maybe like a little pen case or something like that. Like genuinely, that is actually quite a good idea. Oh, that would be quite cool. Yeah. 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 And I like uh, that. apparently it's I'm good. heard now, which is fantastic. What? I'm heard now. Oh, you're heard. I, cool. I can be heard. That's good. Likely you didn't hear me. Oh. Uh, David Boxall says, hi, what software do you both use for editing your videos? Oh. So I yeah. use Adobe Premiere Pro yeah. and a little bit you are. I use a little bit of After Effects as well for my intros and just like a little effects as you'd expect. Rob? I use Final Cut Pro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's admittedly, I would probably say Adobe Premiere is, I mean, it is for standard, really, Adobe mm, Premiere. Yeah. Final Cut Pro can do a lot of what Adobe does, but to be honest, I use it because I like the aesthetic. Yeah, it does look quite nice. It's, it's quite smooth and clean to deal with. Yeah. Whereas Adobe is a little bit clinical. It is, it is. Yeah, definitely. But Adobe works like you can work it with Lightroom and you can do it with Photoshop and all that. It's all, it's all like that. It's all like that. It's good. It's good. So it's, it's difficult scrolling through these. I should have had these prepared. I thought so you did. I, I, I did. You, you had like three. <laughs> I was just reading through them. I was busy. I was busy. Uh, <laughs> Charles Arnold says, I enjoyed your workshop tour very much. Brilliant. When are you going to refurbish the doors? Oh, what a question that is, but actually... That would be... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you, well... If, if you left them the same outside, like left them that same shoddy quantity, but the inside... They yeah. Just... But yeah, they probably just need a lick of paint, really, don't they? Lick and maybe... OSB. Lick of OSP. <laughs> uh, yeah, you joke, but... Yeah, and a draft excluder everywhere. Yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's just a big awful. Panel of insulation. Yeah. 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 Good shout. Good shout. Uh, right. Sneaky McD says, Matt, love your tutorials. I don't know if that's a dig against the uh, project. Uh, I've learned a lot from them. Quick question How come my chisels keep chipping when I do joints in hardwood? You don't seem to have that problem. Uh, I have got Lee Nielsen chisels. Um, they're obviously like really high quality steel, so it might just be you've got an inferior quality steel. Maybe you're working with a cheaper set or something like that. Um, it could be all manner of things. Might be taking off too much material. Um, I mean, if it's big chips, chances are it's the steel. There's a problem with it. So if you've got a good brand uh, that say, let's say 10 pounds or more per chisel, then you probably want to send it back. If it's less than ten pounds per chisel, then you, yeah, you've got, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Di Prout says, the best stall at Maker Central. Question oh, mark. the best stall at Maker yeah. Central. Uh, probably the second stage where me and Sean Evely are on there. Just saying. By the way, those of you that approached me at Maker Central, great to meet you. Uh, that was such an awesome experience also i wanted to say this real quick those of you that got hater coins from me please if you're on instagram can you get a picture of it or get a picture of you with it maybe like sort of pretending to puke in your mouth or something like getting a prize like this and tag me in it i'd love to share it on my monthly update or something like that um 
yeah, that'd be awesome. What was the question? I forgot. Best stall at Maker Central. Best stall at Maker Central. What was it? Um, Colin Furze's stand was really cool. Um, yeah, obviously showing all of his inventions there. To be honest, like when I was there, I was just kind of walking up and down the aisles, not really taking in much because I was just chatting to people the entire time, which was, yeah, that's what I was there to do. But Colin Furze's was probably, was probably my favorite, I think. Seeing those things in person was cool. Uh, Di Pratt said, uh, but they didn't see you. Only made it on Saturday. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I know a few people. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll do like a proper, I'll say I'll meet you in the back left corner of the hall at this time, next time perhaps. Uh, oh, also, shout out for the guy who gave me Bell Vita. That's fantastic. That was brilliant. quite possibly the best thing. <laughs> yeah, those of you that aren't in on that joke, is it the router? Yeah, the router cabinet series. Rob filmed me trying to eat a Bell Vita. It's very dry. He made me laugh. I couldn't swallow it. <laughs> and it became an ongoing joke for the past, for the next three minutes or something like that. And then got some guy gave me Bell Vita at Maker Central. So thank you for that. Very That's thoughtful. Fantastic. I demolished that. Demolished it. Yeah, speaking of that video, we do now release a few reaction videos, overview videos, and yes. uh, comments videos, or a cut down version of what we're doing right now onto the second channel. Yeah. Um, currently there's only one video on it, but we will be releasing three straight after this stream that includes yep. the Bell Vita moment. And uh, <laughs> yep. yeah, no, it's, it was funny when it happened, somehow funnier watching it back. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, second channel, if you guys aren't subscribed to it, it's literally just Matt Estley too. So have a look at that. There'll be Absolutely. more bits there later on. Yeah. JK Canvas says, who can we send, uh, no, how can we send you stickers for the sticker board? Right, okay. So I haven't got a PO box set up yet. I'm really useless. So what you're going to need to do is send all posts to Rycotewood Furniture Centre in Oxford, which is where I teach. Uh, oh, they're going to love me for this. Just getting little letters through. <laughs> as many people send as many stickers for as you can to this Just one like place. Giant box with a sticker in it. No, don't do that. I'll get into so much trouble. I will give you a formal address for this. Um, so, Rye Coats Words, that'll probably do. Can we? Oh, it's a 30 second delay. Oh, I can't tell if yes. it's going to see it uh, or not. They are going to see that, no problem. Yeah, that is where you could send stickers to. Once you do that, if you could put. When you send me a sticker, pop your return address in the thing as well, and I will send you one back. And let me know if you want black or white as well, and I can, uh, I can sort that out for you. Can't promise it'll be quick. I'm a bit rubbish at posting things, to be honest, but shouldn't have said that on a live stream. Oops. I didn't even hear what you said. Cool. Andrew Merritt says, says something a little bit interesting. So far, you've been doing quite small projects. Mm. Bertha was very small, the workbench incredibly small. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very well might I add, he says. Thank you. Isn't it about time you took on something larger, such as a piece of fine furniture? Yeah. Um, okay. So I would like to do that. But at the moment, I think I mentioned this in my last stream, I am very much enjoying just renovating this workshop, making cool things like this, so that in the future, it's a time investment, what I'm doing here. So this is the drill press table, for those of you that are new to the stream. This will be mounted to my pillar drill. It's gonna have adjustable fences on it and everything. And with this, I will be able to make furniture a lot quicker. So what I'm doing now is investing, investing time for future projects. Um, I am, I was lacking inspiration originally. I have got a few ideas. I found an old ideas list that I created about a year ago for potential projects. One of them, one of them is going to be a pallet wood project, which I know some of you are going to cringe at because it's the most uh, saturated thing on YouTube within the woodworking niche. But I want to try and do a pallet wood project with only hand tools or at least limited tools and make it to the same standard that I would make any other piece of furniture. So hand cut joinery, properly finished and just, you know, keep the authenticity of pallet wood, but make it properly at the same time as well. So should be able to demonstrate a few techniques to you in that. Should make it quite accessible, seeing as the fact it's limited tools and I'm not using things like a bandsaw and uh, not using my planer. That's gonna be horrible, actually. That's gonna be horrible. 
I don't, I'm not even going to be here. I'm not going to watch it. I don't want to hear the sounds of that dealing with me wood and you <laughs> yeah just hear the cursing you. cursing yeah. but yeah that, that's something that was on the ideas list um there's also projects uh, yeah what's we'll it yeah there's going to be a side table project coming up later this year hopefully uh it's a project that i teach my students at Rikerwood. Um, but I want to film it for YouTube as well, so you guys can watch it, and my students will be able to watch it as well as a little bit of revision, and I can sit back and relax a bit more. Uh, so I just want to make sure that I'm reading this right, because your handwriting is abysmal. Yep. Uh, Oxpens. Oxpens, yeah. Oxpens Road, yep. and that's ox one one sa S-A, yeah. Yep, that's the one. Boop. Send your stickers to that address. Put your return address in there so I know where to send a sticker to and let me know if you want a black or a white one. And, oh, this sticker wall's looking awesome now. I mean, it, it could do with more, but... It's looking pretty cool. Shall I quickly swing this around? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Mm. That's not bad, Ooh. is it? Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Damn. Need more, then? Yeah, I do need more. We need to get rid of all that MDF and stuff that's being shown on there. Uh, right, here's, here's an interesting question. Actually, yeah. which, yeah, it, I, I'm curious as well. Sharon Payne says, can I do furniture making with one hand at college? Wow. That is, yeah, a little bit of a unique one. So if you had only Where one have I heard of this before? I feel like I heard this question at Maker Central. Oh, really? Um, oh, let me think. What was it? I think a guy sent me, a, it's like a proposal for a collaboration for a guy who has one hand. And oh, what was it? I need to find that. I need to find it. I'm not going to find it. Could you do it with one hand? I feel like you could. I feel like you could. The only thing I'm imagining is chiseling would be quite difficult with a mallet. But. Chisel would be a challenge. Chisel would be a challenge. I need to make sure it's sharp. Yeah, I mean, I. I I guess it depends if you've got a prosthetic hand or not. That's true. Because I mean, any sort of prosthetic limb would be able to do a mallet. Yeah. Action. Well, actually, what I'm thinking, I, I don't mean to sound like if it's, it wouldn't be offensive or anything like that, but a prosthetic hand with a magnet on it, could you hold the yeah. chisel with that and then actually use... Oh, do the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, no, because, yeah, that would make sense. What would the other limit take? The only, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, the only difficulty of a magnet is every time you hit it, it's going to slide slightly. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you could. The only limitation may be machines, but I don't know, really. I don't know. That's a really interesting question. Yeah, that's it's... probably a question that's made me think the most. That's always a good one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. Your best bet is to just go to the college and inquire about it. Um, I feel like if it was a good college, they should be able to tend to that. Yeah. Yeah. Fair cool enough. question. Cool question. Um, also, guys, by the way, we do have some other ideas for live streams in the future. It's not just going to be a QA. and a um, should, we, should we say any of them? You're welcome to give one. I feel like, where's the list? It was over there, wasn't it? Let's give one of them. Uh, one minute. Right. So we're thinking of doing quick projects that will be, like, I don't know, an hour long or something like that. Um, but, you know, I don't want it to be a quick project that's quick, but then sacrifices on quality. I, I want it to actually be, like, worthwhile in doing and not just completely rushed, like the OSB coins. So um, we thought, <laughs> I'm going to say my favourite one from here. Oh, I think no. it's the extractor one. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Which one were you thinking? <laughs> oh, honest, wait, not... There's quite a few, which is slightly... Yeah, okay. We can't promise a lot of these. It was just random ideas. But the extractor one, obviously so many of you are saying get a remote switch for the extractor, and I keep saying you can't do that because it's an MVR switch. But what you can do is create a lever system here that is on a pivot action, so I can just sort of like... And then turn the extractor on from down here. I could also... If I was very clever, link that lever system with a pull cord that goes around to each machine. So I just pull it down and then turn the extractor on from wherever I'm standing. Probably won't go that far, but the lever thing. See, that would be cool. Yeah, and that would be a live stream. That, that's what I'm saying. So you would see all of the, the cogs working in the head. Uh, you'd see all the, all the mocking from Rob. Yeah, it should be a pretty cool project, I think. Um, yeah, I won't, I won't say the other ones. 
But well, apart from tidy up time with Matt. Tidy up time. <laughs> Can, can I make the uh, theme tune to that? Absolutely. Lovely. Yes. <laughs> so if you have any suggestions, genuinely just put them in the comments of this video. Comments of anything, we'll end up seeing them somewhere. Um, we've got plans. Whether or not they're going to come to light, we Good. shall see. Put that paper down. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you've got any streaming plans, that'd be good to know. So yeah. I did find that question, which I thought was a good one. Particularly projects, that'd be quick projects that I could make well. Yes, yes. So Ardil Shah says, please help me disambiguate between carpenter, joiner and cabinet maker. Wow, okay. So and which are you? Right, I'm cabinet maker. So uh, on broad terms, Carpenter, houses, joiner, things within houses, so staircases, like part of the house is what I mean, so staircases, and staircase is the easiest example. And then cabinet maker, furniture maker is the furniture. So I guess you could say that, yeah, carpenter obviously builds the house, joiner builds the stuff that comes with the house, and then furniture maker builds the stuff that you can take with you when you move house. I think that's it on a broad term. Yeah, yeah, that, that works, good. doesn't Makes it? Sense. That works. Yeah. Uh, JK Canvas actually responded to uh, one of the, like a comment about one arm, one house oh, yeah? thing. Uh, and, and I've actually had a few people saying that they know people who are one armed and, and can do it as well. Amazing. Uh, yeah, That's JK cool. Canvas says that there's a guy called, whether or not there's, this is his name, but it would make sense, the blind wood turner. Oh, he was at Maker Central. He was at Maker Central. Insane. Well, that guy. I yeah. can't remember his name. Uh, yeah. Is he completely blind? I think, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, or he's very limited vision, but he would turn. That is just, abs uh, I think that puts a lot of people to shame, to be honest. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. No, Not much more to say than that. Blind wood turner. I can't even do it when I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> David Boxall says, how long did it take you to get a lot of subscribers after starting YouTube? Uh, long time, very long time. I guess it depends on what you define as a lot. Yeah. Um, so, okay. It's, I got my first 100 subscribers. Oh, hello. Uh, so, like, my, my plan with YouTube was to, I had a plan from the start. It was to come in big with lots of big projects, complicated projects, and kind of get myself known for, like, okay, this young guy can actually make things. Because if I was, I started this when I was 20, 20 years old, 21. If I came straight on the scene and I started doing tutorials, people would look at me and think, he's too young, he doesn't know anything. Whereas if I built this back catalogue of projects, building the workbench, building my um, Krenov cabinet, building the curved cabinet and stuff, all these complicated builds, I kind of build myself a reputation for actually if I do tutorials, I can listen to this guy, or I can listen to this guy doing tutorials. So it took a long time. When you're doing project videos, they don't tend to get a lot of views compared to tutorials, in my experience. So um, I think, what was it? 100 subscribers took me a fair few months. 1,000 subscribers took me a year, I think, just over a year. That was when I was building this workbench. Workbench, because it's a workshop project, tends to get a lot more views um, and because it's just more interesting to woodworkers. So a thousand there. In fact, my mate was my thousandth subscriber. And then I hit 10,000 about five months later. But that was when I was going hard on tutorials. The key to getting subscribers is to give more than you receive. That's basically it. Give knowledge, give your time and make it less me, 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 and more like give, 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 and then you'll get stuff in return. That's, yeah, no, yeah, that sounds cool. Again, Gary V knowledge that from the book. I should put an affiliate link in the description. You should. We will sort that out when this is edited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adrian Asfotos says, do you like or have you used any Japanese tools and have you any interest in Japanese chisels? Yeah, Japanese chisels, never actually tried them. Never tried them. What, what's, what's different about it? Japanese chisel compared to any other chisel? They are super hard. Um, well, they're super hard and they're super soft. Okay, curious, let, me, curious. let me explain. If you draw, or if I draw, a cross section of a chisel, like uh, this, mm -hmm. yeah, they laminate two bits of steel together, like that, 
Yeah? And then what you, they do is they put the harder steel on the bottom, softer one on the top. And um, basically, it means that the cutting edge is very hard. But if you need to re-grind the chisel, you're not having to re-grind through an, a solid bit of metal. You've got some softer metal up there, which will make it easier to do so. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. They're a lot harder, but softer at the same time. Have I used one? No. Do I use Japanese saws? Yes. I've got a guy who cuts you 372, I think. See, that looks so cool. Yeah, it's like a, it looks even cooler when it's out of your bag. Oh, it's like Deadpool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I use Guy Kotchu. Uh, yeah, very good. Very good. But yeah, I do need to get some chisels, I think, just to experiment. I think. Stealing this because people said to move it closer. So, what were, you, what were you saying? Soft bit on the top, hard bit on the bottom? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and they also have a very big hollow in the bottom as well. Um, so like, like that kind of thing. So what that means is when you flatten them on a stone, you're not having to flatten all that hard steel. You're just flattening a little bit towards the handle and a little bit towards the cutting tip. Yeah. That's what I know about them anyway. There's a lot more, I think. Uh, Stalis88 asks, would you ever show us your dissertation? Are we social media and woodworking? It sounded really interesting. I think I still have it. I was going to say, I, I mean, I've got mine, no one wants it, but okay. <laughs> you, you, I mean, surely you've kept it. I have kept it. It's yeah. on Google Drive. I'm pretty sure I've got a Rikertwood folder from all my, uh, yeah. yeah. I showed, sort of in the workshop tour, yeah, I showed my sketchbook, didn't I? Yes. But yeah, yeah the dissertation, ooh, that's a good shout. Yeah. I think someone asked that about a year ago, if I could release that. Uh, I, I mean, there's nothing stopping you, is there? No, I might just Other give it. your own ego and just yeah. wondering about, okay, what's my spelling like in this? I am not very good at writing, not at all. And I no. feel like I've actually got worse since then because yeah. I'm out of an educational environment. And I'm just... I, I reread mine a couple of months ago. I, I did quite well, admittedly, for, for the grade. Yeah. But I read the first page and I thought, this guy deserved to fail. Because <laughs> it just it just sounded like I was just skirting around the topic, not being oh, right. clear, just Yeah, but you still got a what grade did you get? I got first. <laughs> so I got a two one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. There's nothing wrong with a two one. But there is if because you didn't oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'm about to start making a whoop. Work a workbench in my cellar. It's not that damp down there, but do you think I'll get any problems with movement in the wood? And how should that inform my choice of wood? Ooh, okay. Choice of wood. Uh, I mean, if you're going to build something, a workbench out of the traditional materials, so let's say beech or oak or maple or ash, those are usually the four, or yellow pine, that's another one. Um, you're probably going to get the same amount of movement either way. Uh, maple's going to lose, uh, move a little bit less, but you should definitely, definitely account for it. Uh, in this workbench top, do you want to move the camera for this? Like, if yeah, we can get it there. Yes. Yeah. Wait, wait. That Sorry, one. I, I was reading comments. Oh, and okay. So that camera. Yes. Can you get it? So like here, looking down the workbench, is it going to stretch that far? Uh, I think I can manage it if people are patient. Right, workbench top. We've got a through tenon here and a through tenon here. So those aren't moving at all. And then beneath that, you can see I've got a stretcher there. So this wood is anchored there and anchored there, which means this bit is going to move in and out using that as its datum point, I suppose, as is the same for this bit. That is going to expand and contract there. Whereas if I made this solid, in the middle, i.e. no gap at all, then as the wood tries to expand, it's going to push these legs apart and open a gap on the underside of the stretcher or the support here and also on the leg tenons as well. And if it shrinks, it might end up making an A-frame with the workbench. Now, this isn't a huge problem, um, providing it doesn't happen like really bad, but you can get away with it. This is why I've done a split top rubo, or one of the reasons I was originally going to make a tool tray for this. But yeah, it's worth accounting for wood movement. It's definitely worth it. Um, another book recommendation, let me get it, I'll bring it in front of the camera, is this one, Workbenches from Design and Theory to Construction and Use 
by Christopher Schwartz. Um, basically, if you follow this book, I mean, look at that one on the front, the workbench. It pretty much looks similar to the Rubo workbench. I didn't copy that, but the advice, the guidance that he gives you in this book kind of makes you end up with something like this. But there is also another design in the back for a Nicholson style workbench, I think it's called, as well. So you, you do have options with it, but yeah, if you're looking at building a workbench, I'd recommend getting this book. Um, it makes you realize how rubbish other workbenches are, um, just in general. So yeah, that works. Yeah, I forgot what the question was, but there we are. It was building a workbench in his basement. Is it damp? Uh, should I account for wood movement? You should always account for wood movement, that's what I'm saying. You can get away with it in some instances, but I would, I would account for it. Just to save your potential problems, it's easy enough to, it's easy enough to work around it, I think. Let's do a few more. I feel like this is working well. You want to keep... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. like Matt, maybe three. Matt is now paying me overtime. Uh, right. <laughs> Okay, something from the shed is, is, is getting a little bit angry. Uh, will you ever teach online course? He says in big question marks. Oh. Big capital letters. Will I ever teach an online course? Ah, maybe. I don't like the idea of it, but... Okay, okay, I'll riff off this. Why do you not like the idea? I don't know. I'll I just... be honest, be honest, no one's watching. I just, right, from the start... We can edit this out. It's live. <laughs> no one has to know that. From the start, I said I wanted to make woodworking accessible to as many people as possible. Um, and I think, I think by asking people to then pay for my content, it's kind of, it's a bit hypocritical. Yeah, it's hypocritical for me to say woodworking should be accessible for everyone and then just sort of like, but you have to pay for this. Now, guilds, like let's say the Wood Whisperers Guild and the Crimson Guitars Guild as well, that's the only two I can think of, they're not particularly expensive. Like we're talking a little bit more than a Netflix subscription, which a lot of people are happy to pay for each month. So like part of me is saying, I want to make it accessible to everyone. And then the other part of me is saying, people can afford Netflix subscriptions. What's it, like, what's the difference gonna be? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I'm really stuck with it. If you'd like to see me do an online course, I would love to do one. Quite frankly, all the information you need to do woodworking well, I have already put out there on YouTube. I've done loads of tutorials, I've done projects. You can go through those and you will learn everything. The value of doing a course is I would be able to structure that in a way that would make it easy to work through. And like that's, yeah, that would be a benefit, possibly. I don't know, I don't know. It's a little bit of a difficult one. Um, I think what some people aren't thinking of is that a, normally when you refer to a course online, it, it, it is a paid thing. So I realize uh, something from the shed, it, it was your question and, and now you're saying do it for free. His, I mean, his YouTube videos, he already does courses. You already do an online course. You building stuff on YouTube, mm -hmm. a lot of the time, your tutorials, that's technically an online course. Yeah. We're just looking at the idea of creating something a little bit more focused, potentially something a little bit more niche. Yeah. Um, which maybe, uh, YouTube can be something that's not only uh, teaching, but also entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas an online course is something that's purely professional, purely down to earth. Gives yeah. You all the information all the time. And maybe that's something that would work as a course more than YouTube, but we haven't sort of yeah, that's decided it. either way yet. Yeah. The only way I have seen it possibly working that allows me to, <clears throat> sorry, to keep my, keep my word on making it accessible is if I did the course through Rikertwood, where I'm teaching, they do the course online. Because, yeah. like, quite frankly, they're back in the dark ages. They need to, <laughs> they yeah. need to do stuff to make it, uh, just to make it work with the modern market. Not everyone can get to a school in central Oxford and learn furniture making. Let's do it online. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Um, yeah, that would be good. That'd be good. But I don't know. It takes a bit of, a bit of persuading, I think. A bit of persuading, a bit of thinking, and don't forget, it's videos on top of what's already being created for YouTube. Because yeah. we would never want to get it to a point where we're saying, right, we're going to make this online course 
see you in two months, we're going to go silent on YouTube. Yeah. Because we're producing this course. It, Absolutely. It, that would never work. It's nope. keep the content coming out on YouTube frequently, yeah. and then in the spare time we've got, create this course. Yes. Yeah, that would be it. That, 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 would, be that it. would be the best way we could do it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I do have that question floating around a lot in my head, like, should I do it, should I not? So, yeah. I feel like I've rehearsed. Like when. Yeah, I've rehearsed that answer in my head so many times. <laughs> yeah. This has been good. It has been, been good. very good. I feel less, like, on edge than last week. No, it's, it's far more relaxed. It considering is. Considering our start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to talk to you about that. I think that's your second disciplinary now. <laughs> the first one was meant to be a positive. You just didn't know what you were saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Final one by Meggy Docks. Yep. What is something super difficult you want to try someday? Oh, I think we had this before. Really? I think we did. What was it difficult? No? no I don't super remember. difficult. I mean, something super difficult at the moment is the metalworking. Um, and I think it is that plane. Making so, it. So that making, plane is, is currently yeah. your ultimate goal. It is. Uh, let me find one that I. Matt's got bored. He's now on his phone. Yeah, I'm the unsociable teenager now. Oh, I can't type when I'm under pressure. It's not that. Okay, right, so the guy who makes them, or his company is called Sauer and Steiner. Um, let me show you some of these things. This is, like, I'm not going to copy this, but can you see that on Ooh, the thing? Uh, yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they are they're just absolutely incredible. Uh, he is on Instagram. It's a bit of a weird spelling. Do you want to pop it in the description, yeah, I'm actually? Yeah, pop it in the description. S-A-U-R. S-A-U-R. And... And yeah, Steiner. Have a look at uh, have a look at his Instagram profile. <laughs> it's just how do you come up with that? How yeah, that that's the ultimate goal for the time being. It's not to copy that, but it's to come up with something as beautiful as that, and most of all have it work. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's the that's the ultimate goal for now. I think. Does sound good. Yeah. Does sound good. Right. Should we wrap it up there then? Indeed, it's gone well. Awesome. Right. Well, yeah. Thank you very much for coming along. How many do we have watching? Can you see? Or? We currently have two hundred and forty-four. Nice. And it's been awesome. consistently going up. Has it? Yes. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. That's awesome. So, yeah, I know this is a little bit static this live stream, but we will be. Um, as I said, we've got ideas. I've lost the list. Uh oh. Um, yeah, I've got you've hidden it. We do have ideas to make these slightly more dynamic and more engaging as well. Maybe interlacing a QA and a with that as well, which will be yeah. challenging for you probably. Yes, more than different anything. camera angles yeah. for me to do with. Yeah, so we do have plans for that. If you have any suggestions, chuck them in the comments below. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, anything else to add? Anything else to add? If you want to help fund more of this live stream stuff, Yep then Patreon is your go-to, yep. for sure. Patreon would be the place to go. Obviously, it's completely up to you, but yeah, that's really helpful if you're able to support on there. Or if you want to get something out of it, just buy a set of plans or something like that, and you'll get, I don't know, workbench plans or whatever. Just, you know, if you want to send a little tip, that is the way to do it. So, yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you very much for watching. Can you actually end this remotely now, or do I have to go up to the camera and awkwardly? I mean, it would be funny if you had to go up to the camera, no. but I can end it remotely. Cool. All right. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next live stream at 7 o'clock next Thursday. We're making it a regular thing. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. We will see we GMT. 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 We're extending the ending again. We need to. <laughs> no, we've extended it. It's, it's gone far too far. Ending the stream in 3, 2, 1.